step a little closer here for a second. There is so much out there that needs to be seen or even discovered by people. So many fascinating places, so many different cultures, religions, and so much more. Traveling is the best way to fulfill your life, in my opinion. Many people are scared to, though, or don't have enough money to. Truthfully, you can find pretty good fares if you just look at the right time and the right place. Don't be scared to step out of your own comfort zone. We all have our limits, but trust me, traveling is something you should really push yourself to do. About 12.3 million U.S. citizens travel overseas and 2.3 million business travelers. That's approximately 14.6 million U.S. citizens that travel overseas in a year. That's less than 5% of the whole population. My name is Maddie Amon and I would like to talk to you today about the importance of traveling and pushing yourself past your limits. The things you can achieve when you do so are unbelievable. I tried something outside of my comfort zone, which was working with technology, or more specifically, making a website. For a couple of months, I made a website all about traveling the world, which wasn't the easiest thing for me. Most of all, it took a lot of time, patience, especially in the beginning. Learning how to import pictures, edit a page, make random changes here and there, those were all things I had to learn. As of right now, I have not finished the website, but I'm still working on it in my free time. I still hope to finish it because it will show the completion of me stepping outside my own comfort zone. Discovering the unknown, especially the universe, is something extremely important to human society. It's crazy how little we know about the universe. None of this information would have been discovered if people hadn't pushed themselves past their own limits. And they had to ask some pretty crazy questions and made some really weird assumptions. For example, everything started with the Big Bang. In the first moments after the Big Bang, a lot happened. Ultimately, our universe cooled down, it, things came together, it expanded, it cooled down, and so on and so on. At 380,000 years, our universe reached what scientists call the sweet spot. This is where the temperature was about 3 Kelvin, which is where electrons start pairing with atoms that then result in radiation escaping. This radiation can still be seen today, known as its afterglow, or as scientists call it, the cosmic microwave background radiation. The first molecular cloud was discovered in 1975. This particular type of cloud was made, of, made up of alcohol and only alcohol. In general, though, clouds are the building blocks to any stars, planets, or life at all. These clouds are scientifically called comets. Scientists also believe that there is a good possibility that life exists in the clouds of Venus. They found that the acid that makes up the clouds actually has water in it, which makes it habitable. Scientists have been also looking into the idea of a planet X being out there somewhere in our own solar system. This planet X is a hypothetical planet that technically would be somewhere behind Neptune. This is also where the Kupir belt lies, a ring of rocks that goes around our solar system and is extremely dangerous to go through. <coughs> it is believed that there are about, are about more than 300 planets beyond ours in our own galaxy. These are called exoplanets. Pluto is one of them. Pulsar planets are, some, are said to be the strangest planets in our solar systems. These are planets that didn't explode when the supernova happened. In other words, when their sun died and collapsed on itself. This is only one theory of why pulsar planets exist. Another is that they might have formed from the debris of the supernova that then formed a small planet with the help of the extreme gravitational pull from all the surrounding debris. These newborn planets also now have a magnetic field around them and move inaxially fast. Magnetars are something just like that, but even more rare. These planets move very slowly and have the strongest magnetic fields to have ever been discovered. There's a link between pulsar and magnetars, but that remains to be discovered. Ultraluminous infrared galaxies are brighter than any other galaxies, which are huge bursts of star formations. In these galaxies, roughly 100 new stars are born per year. In our galaxy, roughly one new star is born per year. Ultraluminous infrared galaxies, also known as ULERCs, were first discovered in the 1980s by IRIS, and since then have been researched closely. Then there's something called the Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall. This is the biggest supercluster known in the universe, and is so large that it takes about 10 billion years to move across it from side to side. It is about 10 billion light years long, 
billion light years wide and about 1 billion light years thick. <coughs> it's about 10 million light years away from the constellation Hercules and Corona Borealis, hence the name. It was discovered in November 2013 by mapping gamma ray bursts. Getting too big to imagine? Well, some, how about something that's smaller than matter itself? Neut neutrinos. These are made, of, made by a nuclear reaction for some that then travel at almost the speed of light. They're so unfathomably small that it's hard to picture them. But 65 million neutrinos pass through your sun mail every second. Back to traveling on our own planet. Ever since I was little, I've been traveling across the world. Today, I visited about 25 countries on four continents. Traveling on the world is my passion, but this doesn't mean it comes easily or without having to push myself past my comfort zone. This has broadened my view on different cultures, religions, and world issues we face in today's society. For instance, I definitely ate some foods I did not enjoy. Kudu meat in Africa, certain tapas in Spain, or macarons in Paris. And I visited some unusual places that made me uncomfortable. Fish factories and rundown towns in Namibia, and overfilled subways in New York, London, and Berlin. And I also saw some things that were eye-opening. The water crisis in Africa, the lack of women's rights in Qatar, and the amount of trash and pollution I've seen in various countries. But this doesn't compare to the overwhelmingly unforgettable experiences I've had. Ziplining through waterfalls in Mexico, skiing the Alps, seeing the Eiffel Tower in France, the Leaning Tower of Pisa in Italy, the Acropolis in Greece, surfing trapezing and waterfall jumping in the Dominican Republic, and seeing wild Africans in their real habitat in Namibia, or even experiencing the nightlife of the richest country in the world, Qatar. All of these things and many more are things I will ever forget and no one can take away from me. As Karen Salmonson once said, collect moments, not things. I can't emphasize enough how important it is to push yourself just a little bit more. When we push ourselves, we learn so much more about ourselves and things about like the universe. Personally, pushing myself to make a website has made me aware of some things I did not know about myself before. If people hadn't pushed themselves past their own limits, we may have never discovered anything about the universe, let alone those cool facts I mentioned earlier. Please take away one thing, though. Push yourself just a little bit more. As Ricky Rogers once said, strength doesn't come from what you can do. It comes from overcoming the things you once thought you couldn't. Are there any questions? Um, I don't really have a favorite country, but some countries that I really did like were Namibia, Qatar, and um, depends on the season, but it really depends. Okay, great job.